There we go. Tell you what, one of my favorite things of all the hunting that I do, and I love it all. I mean, I love elk hunting, I love bird hunting, mule deer hunting. There hasn't been too many hunts that I didn't enjoy, but if there's one thing that's near and dear to me, it's, it's hunting whitetails at home. I think the reason being is that it's personal. I'm scouting year round. I, you know, I probably put a lot more work and effort into it, but uh, archery hunting, whitetails back home in North Dakota is one of my favorite things. And it's a long season. That's what I love about it. Starts in early September, goes all the way till the end of the year. You know, I think it's probably safe to say I think about bow hunting whitetails all year long, you know, and it's been a big part of the summer scouting, you know, whether it's, you know, just sitting on a high spot, the spotting scope, or, you know, just driving around and looking at fields in the summer. Obviously, I love putting trail cameras out, but, uh, you know, it's close to home. It's something I can do a lot, and that's probably one of the things that I enjoy about archery season is it's a long season, and I can just partake, you know, I mean, I can hunt several days. It's a, it's a long season. You know, so with that being said, you know, we're scouting all summer, you know, and trying to find decent deer, you know, and trying to get permission to hunt deer and, and uh, you know, just putting in that work. And our season starts the first Friday in September. And so, you know, we've done the work and, uh, you know, I found, you know, some pretty nice deer. And, you know, I'll even drive around in the summertime after it rains and just look for tracks, you know, you know, big hoof prints, you know, a lot of times will be a buck and then you can try to get eyes on that deer and see what it is but you know we're always looking for big deer and this year you know we had a few deer picked out that were really nice bucks and you know kind of knew where they lived knew a little bit about those deer but you know this year you know we had the wrong wind the wrong conditions where it just wasn't right for one particular buck that I really had my heart set on and so you know a lot of times if it's not right I won't hunt but what I'll do is I'll go hunt somewhere else I'll hunt an area just to try to learn something or you know just to try to get lucky that way I don't feel like I'm putting in a lot of days in my prime tree stand or blind because I feel like the more days you hunt the worse it gets you know those deer start to pattern you and so a lot of times you know some of the biggest deer that I've ever killed with a bow you know is like the first second maybe third sit trying to hunt that deer and usually that's your best chance after that it gets tougher and tougher and so you know first night you know I just I just climb up in a tree stand where I had a few trail cam picks of some decent deer, but uh, maybe wasn't expecting much, but at least I was in a tree, I was hunting. And for me, you know, bow hunting is way more than just harvesting an animal. I just, I love the entire experience. I just love watching deer. I love being close to deer. And so every night that I see deer is a success. I mean, I don't have to ever draw my bow back to have a, a great night in the stand. And so, you know, I went out and, uh, you know, had a few does pass underneath us and just really had a great, enjoyable sit. finally get the right wind, you know, to target the buck that I really had my heart set on. And, um, you know, sometimes with hunting, you know, we, it's, it's a chess game where you're trying to scheme, you're trying to, you know, figure out what the next move should be. And this is a case where I overthought the situation. So what had happened was we were really dry and a lot of stuff got hay that normally isn't hay. You know, a lot of CRP and WRP acres were hayed. And I was worried that the hang was going to move these deer around where they were bedding. And so what I did is I moved my tree stand. I get up in the tree and I'm watching and uh, the buck that I'm after comes out just like he should, but he's 200 yards away. got to see the deer, but I was in the wrong spot. 
in hindsight, if I would have never moved my stand or would have never changed anything, I probably would have had a pretty good chance of killing that deer. And so that's what you get for thinking too hard sometimes. But I just overthought the situation, second guessed it. In hindsight, you know, made a mistake or made an error where I didn't get a shot at that deer. But I saw the deer and the good news was that I saw the deer, learned a little bit more about that deer. And um, I didn't feel like I polluted the area because I was so far off the X. And so I slid in and uh, made a few adjustments where, you know, a lot of times, you know, I'll just slide in with climbing sticks and just a, you know, lightweight aluminum tree stand and set it up that day. You know, I think a lot of times people, you know, have this mentality where they gotta, you know, get way out ahead of time, set all their tree stands up in April and let the deer get used to everything. I don't know, I, I, would, I would disagree with that in the sense that I've killed a lot of deer by just watching, seeing what was happening and then making that adjustment. and. Uh, Especially if you go out in the middle of the day, rubber boots, you know, just as quietly as you can, just pop a tree stand up and get in that tree, you have a really good chance of killing that deer. And so, you know, that's a strategy that I use a lot where if I don't know enough about that deer, a lot of times I just hate to go in and, and just pollute it because I might not understand exactly where that deer's bedding or I might not know enough about that deer or that deer will come in downwind or do something that I don't really anticipate or expect. When that deer knows it's getting hunted, they become a lot harder to hunt. And so a lot of times I'll just watch. I'll just, you know, if I'm not sure, I'll just park off the X, so to speak, and just watch and learn more. Then once I learn more, then I can make a very precise move in on a deer and, and have a pretty good chance of killing it. And a lot of times, you know, we'll get it done that first or second sit. This time it didn't pan out. So we made the adjustment. You know, we got back into the tree where we probably originally should have been and never got eyes on that deer again. So the other night we were out here and we were in a ladder stand, oh, probably about 200 yards away. And we seen a really nice buck come through here. And, you know, we didn't have a shot, but uh, had the right wind today where we came back out here. We came out here early in the day, like around one o'clock, two o'clock, and just put some climbing sticks in a lone wolf up in the tree here and uh, just got in here early. And uh, you know, just hope that that deer does something similar tonight. But it feels right because the, the temperatures are, are cooling off. I mean, it's probably dropped. Today's probably 20 degrees colder than it was yesterday. A little bit of a front coming through, a little bit of a drizzle rain. And so uh, we're just hoping that these deer move early. And uh, yeah, I just hope we see that buck again. It was just a beautiful deer. wasn't in the forecast, but just saw the first deer of the evening. A couple of does kind of came down, went off to the side. Still got probably about half an hour, 45 minutes of daylight here, so we'll see what happens. What a difference a week makes. You know, this past week it was like 85 degrees some days, hardly any wind. And I chose just to kind of back off the bow hunting here and just keep out of some of my spots. I didn't want to overhunt some spots and didn't think the deer would be moving well with it being that hot. But uh, now we've got an east wind 
and things are really cooled down. It's probably about 60 degrees today, which is you know, 20, 25 degrees colder than it was just a couple of days ago. So we're back in the tree here and we'll see what happens, but it should be a fun sit. Everything feels right tonight. Well, the hunt continues. I don't know how many days we've hunted this year. It's been a different year. It's like we went from summer to winter. And so we had some really mild, unseasonably warm weather here in September through early part of October. Now it's getting towards the end of October. And this is like the first cold snap. And so, you know, we hunted pretty hard, but then, you know, the conditions just didn't feel right. And so actually I just kind of stayed out of some of these spots for a while. I just didn't want to pollute them and, and screw it up. And so, but everything feels right tonight. I mean, it's like 20 degrees. It's like the first real cold day, first frost that we've had. Leaves are all blown off and falling off the trees now. And it was really windy earlier, but the wind's starting to lay down. And so I'm just hoping that these cold temperatures finally get these deer moving during the daylight. Finally, it came to the point where I wasn't even seeing any trail cam pics of that deer. It's like I just couldn't find that deer again. I mean, I would glass the area, I, you know, did a lot of scouting. It's like that deer disappeared. I just could not find that deer again. And, you know, that's pretty typical for us too, where we'll have these summer patterns that will maybe hold into early September. But then once you get into the middle of October, a lot of things change. You know, crops get harvested, you know, just deer just move around. That's a big reality for deer hunting you know, out on this prairie, out in these egg landscapes, is that these deer move a lot. They move a lot to winter. You know, they'll have wintering yards and farmsteads and, you know, small towns where these deer will winter. They'll, you know, they just move a lot. And it's almost like, you know, these deer will spend, you know, different parts of their lives in different areas and they'll never come back at times. And so we just lost that deer. You know, so this farmstead that we're hunting, it's, it's kind of an interesting spot. And I love hunting farmsteads, you know, because you, know, you look at North Dakota, even South Dakota, you know, there's places where we don't have a lot of trees. You know, they planted shelter belts and, you know, they planted trees at one time. These old abandoned farmsteads, a lot of times will have a lot of trees and the trees will be old and there's just a lot of cover. And they're just great areas for deer to winter, just great habitat. And it seems like if you have a, uh, an abandoned farmstead that's maybe isolated away from everything, you know, especially if there's cover and deer in that area, it just seems like those farmsteads, those deer are attracted to those farmsteads and those deer will pass through and spend some time in those abandoned farmsteads. You know, and the, and the thing about this is that, you know, a lot of these farmsteads are set up as a square, you know, and they've got, you know, an old abandoned house, maybe an old abandoned barn. Then the, the trees or the shelter belts planted in a square to basically provide protection for that farm when there's people living there. And a lot of these farmsteads have been abandoned for many, many years. But the trees are still there and the old buildings are still there. And so great, great locations for hunting deer. I mean, I hunt in farmsteads a lot. And, you know, it's easy to overthink things. It's e you know, easy to make things maybe more complicated than they have to be. But one of the things that I found is that if you're hunting an abandoned farmstead, probably the easiest, best way to, to hunt in a lot of cases Instead of making the noise to try to climb up in a tree or set up a blind or whatever, it's just to climb into one of the old buildings, you know, as long as it's safe, you know, climb into an old barn or old granary, whatever it is, where you've just got a window or a crack in a door. It's basically the ultimate ground blind because what I find is that in a lot of cases, you know, your scent is really contained. And a lot of times, just the way the trees are planted and stuff, you know, some of these buildings, the deer don't ever come in from behind, you know. And so this is a situation where this farmstead 
you know, bought it a few years ago and hunted it a few different ways. And, and um, honestly, some of the first ways that I hunted it weren't that effective. You know, I was probably overthinking things. And then finally one day, I just had this epiphany where, oh, why don't you just sit in the barn and shoot them out the window? We've been doing that and it works like a charm. Well, it's been a long season. It's kind of getting to that, I guess, pulse rut phase. Deer rifle season just got over. And I'm still bow hunting. We're set up here. It's kind of a neat, it's an old abandoned farmstead. And uh, <laughs> the best way that I've found to hunt this property is just to sit in this old abandoned barn. So it's kind of the perfect blind. Kind of contains your scent. The deer really don't come from the backside, they kind of come from the front where all these trees are, so it's really a cool spot. Wow, that's a good buck. The, the shot felt good. I couldn't shoot it. I had a nice shot over here, but I couldn't swing over far enough. So he's just standing there at 30 yards. I had to wait for him to move across the, the field in front of us here. He was walking away. He just turned just a little bit, which I arranged it earlier. I guessed it like 40, 43 yards. And so I had my 30 yard pin. I didn't even adjust it. I just went four inches or so high and it went right in where it shut up. But good angle, but it's just a tough, tough shot. Oh, yes. That was a great deer. long season has come to an end. Wow. Well, we gave it an hour. Here's the arrow here. Broke off. Okay penetration, but obviously not as good as a pass through. Let's see what we got for blood up here. Blood, blood, blood. 
blood on the snow. Which way did he go? Oh, blood up here. I'm guessing that's his track right there. I think we've got a dead deer up ahead of us. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> that is an awesome, awesome North Dakota buck. Boy, he didn't go far. Oh. All the sits, finally, when it all comes together, that's just a beautiful, beautiful deer. Great five by five. Awesome. <laughs> Couldn't be happier. Couldn't be happier. <laughs>